All right, so now we're on part 2.4 of the book, The Structure and Functions of Genes, so gene regulation. This should sound familiar. Again, this is part of the... So there's a lot of different steps in the central dogma, and at each step there's the choice of whether or not this bit of information is going to get passed along to the next part. Okay? So not all DNA is actually transcribed into mRNA, and then even after it's been transcribed, not all of that RNA is going to get translated into a protein or polypeptide. There are many different points at which gene expression can be regulated. So in prokaryotes, it's very, very simple. It's basically, does transcription start? If it does, that gene is going to get transcribed. Basically, the ribosomes will glom on to that emerging strand of mRNA and start uh, translating it as it's being uh, transcribed. In eukaryotes, it's quite a bit more complicated as the mRNA has to, it's, it has to get spliced together. The introns have to get taken out and the exons have to get spliced together. It has to leave the nuclear um, membrane, so it also needs a cap and a tail in order to prevent degradation. Uh, it can get degraded or blocked by microRNAs, and then it still has to reach a ribosome and then get translated. So there's a lot of more different steps in eukaryotes where gene regulation can occur. So genes often have a modular structure. They're sort of set up in a similar way across uh, kingdoms. Uh, in eukaryotes in particular, uh, they have this particular structure where kind of upstream ahead of the gene in the five prime direction, you have the cis regulatory module where that tells them um, where and when this gene should be expressed in the organism. Uh, your core promoter, which is basically the on or off switch for the gene, ATG as the start codon for the um, coding uh, region. And then you have your coding region where the exons are what is going to get um, expressed, so X for expressed, and the introns are going to get cut uh, out of those sections in post-transcriptional modification. And then um, sometimes there's a terminator at the end, sometimes not, and then along that three prime end there is usually called downstream, what comes kind of after the gene. So a lot of times um, in software and such, uh, you'll be able to actually show the different parts of a gene in either different colors. Um, in this case, uh, this book is going to have uh, gray for the untranslated regions. It's going to use um, different colors for the different exons and then have orange for the areas, the introns that are getting cut out. So this is in a, in a computer screen or something, you would see this big block of text, but you can highlight or color the different parts of the gene. So that um, coding sequence is uh, an open reading frame, okay, an ORF we'll call them. So it's the length of the DNA or RNA that doesn't have any stop signals is the, the, the open reading frame. It begins with the ATG at the very beginning, and it ends with the uh, uh, TAA here, which will be uh, UAA in the mRNA, but that's in one of the stop codons, one of the three stop codons. So we're going to zoom in for a second to look at the cis regulatory module. And we have a bunch of different DNA sequences here, which match um, active sites in a bunch of different proteins called transcription factors that when they bind to this section of DNA can either uh, enhance, improve the uh, transcription of a gene, or they can silence and repress the transcription of a particular gene. So different transcription factors bind to different sites. Uh, they could be particular to this just this one gene, or they could influence a whole bunch of different genes that all have similar sites in this cis regulatory module. So transcription factors are these proteins, which they have genes that code for them too, that regulate the expression of other genes. So in the beak example, that uh, occurred earlier in chapter one, we talked about ALX1, and that is a gene that codes for a transcription factor. This uh, ALX1 protein here that affects a whole lot of other genes and even a whole separate transcription factor gene that get, can turn on, and that in effect will cascade and go affect other genes as well. So you can see that the um, regulatory networks can get very complicated very fast. 
And that when ALX1, this particular transcription factor, uh, gets changed or mutated, it's going to have a long, big downstream effect on a bunch of other genes that are going to affect how beak shape is determined in these finches. Okay, So there's these region that controls where this particular gene is expressed, and then a region of that gene that controls where it binds to DNA. Okay, And so by changing how the structure of this gene in the DNA will change the protein structure, that transcription factor down the line, which has a cascading effect uh, in these organisms, changing the phenotype, which in this case is the beak shape. Finally, just to sum everything up, central dogma, the idea of DNA, information movement starts in DNA, is transcribed to RNA, is translated to polypeptide. Okay. Um, the template strand of the DNA is what's used to build the mRNA, which is going to match the coding strand, the five prime strand here, five prime to three prime is going to match the RNA. And then this sequence is going to match the polypeptide here, which is then going to determine our phenotypes. So if anything, be really, really solid with this slide. This is what you should have pulled out of um, GenBio and brought with you at this point. Okay, and then we're going to move on to more and different things.